we are here at the SPAN booth with Arch Rowe. Is that right. correct? Fantastic. Yes. Um, we've heard a lot of buzz recently, uh, but you're a relatively new face at uh, in, in SPI 2019 and, and solar power in general. Tell me a little bit about yourself and SPAN. Sure. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Um, I'm Arch Rao. I'm the founder and CEO of SPAN. Um, before I started SPAN, I was the head of products at Tesla, where I helped build uh, products like the Powerwall and bring it to the market. And I built a couple of uh, energy companies before that. Uh, Jack Weinstein here is one of our leading engineers, one of our founding engineers, and he leads our system integration efforts. Um, um, the genesis for SPAN is, is quite straightforward, like having seen the deployment of thousands of solar and battery and EV charging systems over the last uh, decade, um, I personally saw a limitation of the electrical panel in a home. It's uh, it's, it's, it sits at the center of everything, the old forms of energy like the grid and new forms of energy like solar and batteries, but has seen very little innovation in over half a century. So it seemed like a, the right time for us to be reimagining or reinventing the electrical panel. Uh, and that's what you see both on our tiny home here and, uh, and behind you as well, Josh. Um, and the idea is we're integrating some of the essential components that are required in a distributed energy install to make it uh, make solar, battery, EV charging plug and play, while adding a whole lot of functionality for the customer, like being able to control everything in your home in real time, whether you're on grid or off grid. Yeah. One of the things you said there right away, plug and play. Mm -hmm. That's a key piece of this. These, these, there are intelligent systems out there. There's, there's a few other panels out there, yeah. but plug and play is kind of the holy grail because installation takes time, time takes money, and the installations are very expensive. Yeah. So what do you mean by plug and play? Well, our long-term vision is that um, people don't think about these new energy technologies as aspirational, but it becomes as commonplace as a home appliance. Sure. Like it should be something that you get in every home, like you get a refrigerator or a washer dryer. We're not quite there yet, but I think what we can definitely solve is the design and installation complexity. Right. Today, installing a solar system or a battery system takes a day, day and a half, if you will. We want to get it down to be able to, uh, you know, half a day install, right, or even less if possible. And I think that comes by stripping away the need for all these disparate components that all have to be clued together yeah. and has to be customized for every single home. Yeah. Like, for example, Jack worked on uh, integrating our, you know, pre, like he was a Tesla as well with, with yeah. us, and you know, he helped integrate um, a lot of our battery products with third-party inverters, and maybe you can talk to the challenges of trying to get all these disparate pieces to work together versus what our integrated panel. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, there's, there's, there's no comparison to a factory integrated system, right? Like, what, what we're doing is, what we're doing at least with our initial product is we're taking a large part of the balance of system and designing it to work well together and then testing it at, at the factory so that installers can be guaranteed that when they put this thing on the wall, it does exactly what the homeowner wants it to do. So what kind of connections can an installer expect to see? Mm -hmm. Is it literally just AC power connection and you're done? You That's right. Ethernet, wireless, what, what else? Well, so from an install standpoint, we wanted to be, uh, we wanted to not require any retraining for an electrician. So what you'll see in our opened up panel behind you is a, uh, an interface that is very familiar to an electrician. It's the, main, it's the main breaker and a bunch of stubs where they can put traditional off-the-shelf residential breakers into, right? But behind the scenes, like what's sitting in our little sub-assembly between the bus bar and the breakers is a, a whole lot of sensing, actuation, and logic or intelligence built into it. Well, Jack can talk a little bit about the communication stack that we have here. Yeah, well, so... We do require communication science. Is the one. So if you're if you're installing For any us any kind of intelligence, you need right. some communication. Of yeah. If, if you're installing us with a hybrid inverter, you need to run AC from the inverter to our panel, land it in the breaker, and then we'll need like twisted pair RS485 or some okay. other communication line to the inverter. But that's it. But yeah, that's on the on the side side. Our device is mm. able to talk mm. uh, LTE and Wi-Fi and Ethernet out of. Uh, our panel back to our cloud. We can also point that information to the utility if needed, or we can point that to uh, the asset owner if needed Sorry. as well. You guys so let me, let me ask you a, a question about uh, just the, the general functionality of this system, mm -hmm. right? Just keep it really straightforward. So if is this something that's gonna help an installer remove the need for a protected loads panel? Is this does this completely uh, replace your existing yeah. control your your existing panel? Yeah, that's it correct. Does. Yeah, 
This okay. is intended to be a main panel replacement. So the gray sheet metal box Got we're it. used to seeing on the Got side it. of homes for the last mm -hmm. 75 years needs a revamp. So I'm a, I'm a consumer, pretend I'm a consumer in, in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and like much of the current permit polls, 80% uh, includes storage, right? Mm -hmm. We're in a post-NEM world, we have all these different tariffs that require storage really to, to make it work. We're also wanting battery backup, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, you're gonna pay for a battery, you don't wanna just use it for self-supply self functionality, you wanna have some security out of that, that's what That's people right. think batteries right. do, right? So then, uh, how does uh, SPAN play into that picture? D does the, my, my installer say to me, hey, this is a great technology, it's going to be um, more dynamic than putting mm -hmm. in a protected loads panel, it's going to be less expensive, it's going to add value and functionality to your life. Yeah. What is it, what's the overall value proposition? Yeah, I think first of all, Hawaii is a key market for us for the, for the reason that you stated. The attach rate of storage is very, very high because of the changes in, in NEM regulation and, and other energy cost rates. The second is, when we talk about our products uh, to end consumers, homeowners, or when we talk about it with our customers, which is the solar installers, there are three things that we like to emphasize. Cost, functionality, and aesthetics. On the cost side, because we reduce the number of material components on a site, like we're doing away with all these conduits and gutters and all of that stuff. Huge. And we're doing away with yep. third party meters and automatic transfer switches, all of which is embedded in our device. The material cost comes down, but more importantly, the labor cost comes down substantially. Right? Yes. One or two electricians uh, can go get this install done in the same day, and that's huge. Yeah. Right? And that translates into cost reduction for the customer. Functionality, if, like you said, one, one aspect is self-supply or self-consumption, but another key aspect of having a battery is being able to have some security. Right? When the grid fails, how do you make sure that your home is powered? Today, that solution is, is very um, unrefined in my mind. You just get a portion of your home backed up and that's static forever. Ah, yeah. It just doesn't solve, right? So if you get a chance to play with our app inside, you'll see that <laughs> right, that notion. Right. Right. Absolutely. We built this tiny house over here with our panel being powered with solar panels and a battery. To Thank demonstrate. you for building a tiny house with a bunch of solar on it. Because what is more cool than a tiny house with this really uh, with it's solar kind of, kind of storage tech? I constantly <laughs> get stoked about tiny houses. Maybe this will be a second business line for <laughs> us. Well, no, we'll because, because because it's small and you reduce your consumption at the same time of increasing your mm -hmm. your, your generation, yeah. then you have the opportunity to think about the integration of the electrification of transpo, all that's that right. stuff. So that's why it's kind of just exciting and to see it all in one box. And we want to be something tangible, right? Like, Although we're just a year old, we actually have a product that works today. And what, what, what I wanted to emphasize on functionality is for the first time, customers can choose dynamically in real time what part of their home they want back to. Yeah. You're no longer uh, stuck with whatever your installer put on a sub panel when they did the installation. And the no. third point was the aesthetics, right? Like we want our product to look beautiful. We also want it to look beautiful when you install it in your garage wall or outside your home. We want there to be two or three boxes, not seven or eight gray boxes and a bunch of conduits running between. Uh, so there, there's so much on each of those points. We could probably talk for a long time if yeah. you had the time. But yeah. you know, the notion of aesthetic, when we when we uh, sell a solar plus storage system in Hawaii, we're not usually showing those pictures or at least talking. I'm not yeah. in the installation business anymore. Yeah. But I yeah. but people are often surprised by the amount of electrical equipment. That's right that it requires. So the, the more we can consolidate that, create a nice aesthetic, I think that's important, because you don't live with this for a long time. That's but right. the dynamic nature of, mm. of storage, uh, of being able to choose your loads when something happens, creates a really interesting narrative, right? right? Because you want to say, okay, maybe my standard loads are X, Y, and Z, my, 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 my communications, or my, uh, I don't know, my We've lights, or that. whatever. In our app, what you'll see is my must-have loads, like must always have on, as much as you can back me up with the battery. Nice to have loads, which will shut off when my battery reaches like only five hours of storage or 50% energy left in the battery, and not essential loads. Absolutely configurable. Or you can literally slide them back and forth. So then you have these three settings. Yeah. So it's, hey, your uh, span system's installed, welcome to the system, you get it on an app or something. That's right. And yeah. then it's, you're, you're already set up for those three sections. That's but right. if you want to choose actual breakers or actual loads, you can do that as well? Absolutely. You can, go and, you can go and turn specific breakers off in real time. And now what Jack and team are working on is being able to control more than just the circuit, but actually control specific appliances. Oh, wow. Like one of the, you want to talk about the EVSC? That would be yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think we can't overemphasize how different an experience it's going to be for homeowners to have this panel and to have dynamic, real-time control over what's going on in their house. Like we, you'll see, uh, you'll see in our demo, we provide live updates, like how much time you have left on battery. 
And so we're, we'll be able to exist in dialogue with homeowners being like, oh, if you, you, know, if you deprioritize your AC, if you let us turn it off when you, when you hit that low battery threshold, you're gonna have four more hours on battery. So it right? actually and, does those kinds of estimations yeah. as well. And, and, yeah. and because we have per circuit metering, we can, we can produce those estimates and have them really mean something. We can actually you know, forward predict, like you generally come home and turn on your lights around 7 p.m. and this is how much power the, the lights in your kitchen take. It sounds really, really easy. I mean, that's the last thing a homeowner wants is what they, they want what they want, but when you finally get a system installed as you're presented with this engineer-designed programmer interface mm -hmm. that no one really understands. That's right. The, the it guy needs who, to be the, simple the and engineer right. who designed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're really solving for simple and intuitive. Um, you know, the, the end customer has, has never had this level of uh, intuitive interface to their home. Today, if you think about the world of things you can control in your home, they're all disparate. Each of those exists in a separate stack. Your smart thermostat, your lighting control system, your water heater, they're all, they're all going through different platforms and we're trying to homogenize that. Yeah. Uh, and, and as Arch was saying, we're, you know, we're thinking about how to kind of give homeowners complete control over how energy is used throughout their house. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're pushing actively to start uh, exerting appliance by appliance control over the house, right? Because turning off circuits is the necessary first step to kind of crudely manage or like coarsely manage energy flow through the house. And then the obvious next step for us is to start managing specific appliances. So, one, so we have, uh, sorry, so we have an EV charger on the right. wall of this tiny house. Um, and we're actually doing local communication to the EV charger to adjust its charge rate. Um, J1772 allows you to modulate the available current to the car. So we can go in and on this charger right here, we can go in and you know dial down the available current to you know what's what the what That's your right. solar is currently capable of, or like the battery power that isn't currently be, being used on loads. And what's and, really cool about that is it's great functionality for the end consumer, but it doesn't take a lot of imagination to think about how you can go from there to say, if Hiko or some utility is willing to compensate me for turning down my charger right now because I'm allowing my neighbors and the rest of the grid to be stable. That's great. Like we can enable that digitally, right? Without having to have the utility coming and installing one more thing in your home to do that. Right, right. A lot of opportunity here, almost talking about virtual power planting now. Yeah. And of course, there's yeah. the relationship between this uh, technology and other devices. How far do you see SPAN going in that relationship? Is it a, uh, are you moving into smart house technology or are you partnering with groups and allowing them to kind of handle that area of the business? Very prescient question. Um, I think the whole smart home ecosystem is a bit of a maze right now, right? There's, there are too many players all trying to be the center of the home and it's, it's convoluted at best. And we're not promising to be more than we are today. I think first and foremost, we want to be building an awesome product that can make the adoption of renewable energy less complex and less expensive because that's that's the mission right we want to accelerate the adoption of distributed renewable energy but in doing so we're building a product that naturally sits at the center of your home everything that's powered in your home is connected to this panel already right and we're enabling it with a lot of horsepower both in the computational power and communication to be able to uh, to allow customers to be able to see it from anywhere in the world and control it from anywhere in the world once you have that platform that base then enabling things like lighting controls or thermostat controls or water heater controls becomes incremental software updates that we want to do. Gotcha. I don't think there's going to be one winner in this space, so we will we, we know and we intend to partner with the leading players in the, in the marketplace, and I think the goal is for us to always focus on the best customer experience. And if a customer wants a particular end customer experience, an experience that's driven by a different app, we want to support that. Excellent. Well, yeah. I think it's a great place to wrap it. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, Rao, CEO and founder yeah. of SPAN. Is that the, and then also, Jack uh, Weinstein, thanks for letting us know all the inside uh, yeah. nitty-gritty of, of the technology. Very much thanks appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Aloha, guys.